Sorry, I look like a scrub right now. I'm not actually trying to record anything. Uh, but I'm just, you know, giving the chickens fresh water in between all the rain showers. And I just wanted to show you something. So if you follow me on Instagram, then you've probably seen my stories. I have morels growing all up in my tulips and in my beds around here. So I just picked this handful here, but I just, I have to show you. I know you're probably like so tired of seeing this, but I have to show you this one. So in the tulips here, we've got some, I already picked some there. This little patch here. But here's the one I really want to show you. What the heck is that? Like, this is my hand. This is my hand, you guys. Look how big that is. Here, quarter for reference. <laughs> Look at the stem on that. In case you didn't know, morels are one of the very few mushrooms that you actually can't cultivate, so they are only available from foraging in the wild. So to have this growing in my garden beds, kind of a big deal. So I'm gonna go fry these up in some butter with a little bit of flour and some seasoning and enjoy the steaky flavor. Well hello there flower friends. So Saturday getting ready to open up the stand and do some subscription deliveries tomorrow. Thankful that it's not raining for once this week or for like the last month but uh, guess what? Can you see? Can you see the little drizzles? Yeah. Just never ends. I actually just read an article that was saying that the Pacific Northwest is one of the few places in the world that is experiencing a colder than usual March and April. The rest of the world is too hot. And honestly, I don't know which one is worse. They probably both suck. So I'm having, I'm having some struggles. Tulips have all kinds of disease here and I've had a massive crop failure. So this whole bed, pretty much is just gone. I think that may be part of the reason, but the coloration on this doesn't look so good. So that might be some of it too. It's also just been so wet. It like is nonstop rain and it's really doing a number on these tulips. I don't want even want to touch them. I don't want to spread this around. The leaves were kind of molding and now I have buds that are molding. It's not looking good. So if you consider the loss that I had in the fall when my bulbs were rotten and then you add in the loss to the actual blooms, I really have lost over a third of my crop. So that is hundreds of dollars down the drain. Another nail in the coffin for tulips. I had told you in the video where I said, you know, flowers I'm not growing this next year and tulips were, were borderline. Now I might be pretty convinced because they're supposed to be reliable and honestly this year they have been anything but. So we'll see what we can salvage and cut our losses and move on I guess. Also by the way I'm wearing this glove because I have a kind of deep cut on my finger and I don't want it to get nasty. So don't judge the glove. So this here is a double mix from some wholesale for the small scale and seems like there's some good stuff in here. Also so many yellows. I swear I ordered like no yellows and somehow all I have are yellows. It is like a curse. <laughs> My farm's curse is just the yellow curse. Hey. One of my subscribers is out of town for two weeks. So half of their subscription they're out of town for it. So I mean since I'm not having a bunch of sales or other subscribers I've just let them push it back. So we're skipping them this week and next week. We just have two subscriber bouquets to deal with today, and then stocking up the stand. What the? So I did a little poll on Instagram because I like to make data-driven decisions, and I asked fellow flower farmers who follow me there if they have noticed more disease issues with their tulips this year compared to last year. And I had about 25% of responders say yes. All of them were local flower farmers, so you know, around my area here in western Washington, near kind of you know Puget Sound or even towards the coast. And we all had different suppliers, so sounds like it's a weather issue. And I mean, 
I haven't washed these off with yet, and that's still just water coming out. But I mean, you know, these double ones collect a lot of water, so I'm sure it's just, they're just getting soaked constantly. And when they're packed so close together using the egg carton method, it's a recipe for spreading disease because, you know, the leaves and the buds are all just touching. I probably should have covered the tulips to prevent the hail damage on that first round, um, but, you know, to have to cover them to prevent them from just getting oversaturated, I would rather cover ranunculus, you know, and spend the time and energy doing that over tulips that don't make me any money and lose me money every season. Disease tulips in the garbage. Don't mix that into your compost. Alright, I'm trying to kind of get some aesthetically pleasing bunches, mixed bunches going on. So these nice ones that are a lot of the doubles are going to go to my two subscribers who are getting deliveries this week. So I think these will be nice. I just, I don't know what the curse is. I just am cursed with red and yellow. I really am. Uh, and then I've got three other ones that I can load the stand up with. So hopefully it'll be good. And then because we've been having such cold weather, I still have daffodils that are in the bud stage. Really almost in May. That's pretty crazy. So I think I will harvest some of those to round out the stand. And I might have some anemones as well. So we'll see on that. No ranunculus yet. I cannot wait for those. Those look nice, right? Alright friends, got the stand open. Gonna go off and make some deliveries of these beautiful double tulips. And uh, hopefully we have some sales today. Sold one bunch of daffodils and two tulip bunches. So I think that's pretty decent. It was just cloudy all day for most of the day and then it started raining around four. Uh, so I'm gonna close the shop. We're gonna just put it in here again like we did last time and call it good. Friends, it is raining. I'm gonna see what I can get to replenish the stand today. So I got some shorty anemones here, and this is viburnum. It's still in the pot that I bought last year, whoops. And I just took a couple of little baby branches off, so don't judge me. So there's a little hook that I put on this pole to keep it secure and sometimes when I'm opening up I drop it then I get to play I Spy for the little hook. So that puts me at $60 for the week. Slowly easing into the season. These bouquets will be heading off to the nursing home since I already have too many flowers inside. So they'll get to enjoy some spring vibes. Thanks so much for watching. See you next week.